so yeah, thank you very much uh, for coming. I think I know a, a couple of people there as well. Uh, good to see you. Um, so yeah, but yeah, basically today, um, this webinar is going to be about looking at using a management system to focus on your customers, um, whether that's to get new customers or get them to spend more or just recommend um, get them to recommend you to other potential customers. Um, and we'll be looking at how we do this um, using ISO 9001. Um, as I say, probably, you probably already know, um, I implement um, quality management systems, environmental management systems, health and safety management systems, and information security management systems for clients. Um, but today we're just going to be focusing on, on quality management. Um, basically, the, the principle behind the um, ISO 9001 quality management standard uh, is to help ensure that safe, reliable and high quality products and services can be delivered by organisations who at the same time can increase their productivity and decrease errors and waste. So basically, it's about ensuring that consumers and end users always receive products and services to these internationally recognised standards. So. What are ISOs? Well, ISOs are a shorthand for standards which are administered by the International Organization for Standardization. Now, something we get asked a lot is because International Organization for Standardization um, doesn't, doesn't have the same acronym uh, in the UK. Well, that's because um, they would have different acronyms in different languages. So it obviously would be IOS in English. Uh, it's actually um, OIN in French, and I'll do my, my best in Inspector Clouseau accent, uh, and that stands for Organisation Internationale de Normalisation. Um, so the organisation, basically to save confusion, decided to give itself the short form of ISO, which is derived from the Greek ISOS, which means equal. Um, so the idea is that whatever the country, whatever the language, the short form of the name will always be ISO or ISO. So it's headquartered in Geneva in Switzerland. It was founded in 1947, but it's more like a, an umbrella organization whose members are all standard setting organizations from some 164 different countries. Um, it's by far the, the world's largest developer of voluntary international standards. Uh, it has more than 20,000 standards, which it's set and they cover absolutely everything from manufactured products and technology to food safety, agriculture, healthcare, uh, just to name a few. Um, so an ISO standard itself is developed by a global panel of experts within what's called a technical committee. Um, so once the need for a standard has been established, these experts then meet to discuss in what's called negotiator standard. Um, so the technical committee is obviously made up of experts from the, the relevant industry that the standard's looking at but also from a, a broad broad area of other, other people such as consumer associations, academia, non-governmental organizations and, and government representatives themselves. So the creation and the ratifying of a standard is all done in a consensus based way. Um, so the point really is that these standards have an enormous amount of time and a, and a huge amount of global expertise which goes into their construction. Um, so the other question would be, how popular are they? Um, so there's over 1 million companies and organizations in over 170 countries um, that are certified to ISO 9001. Uh, by way of comparison, there's more than 300,000 certifications to ISO 14001, which is the environmental standard, again, um, in over 170 countries. Um, but note that these figures are just ones who've been certified, so there may be many companies operating to these standard but are not actually certified um, or in the process of getting certification. So that's really just a very quick whistle-stop tour of ISO standards and where they come from. So the next question is, how do ISO standards work? Well, standards themselves are described by the ISO organisation in the following way think of them as a formula that describes the best way of doing something uh, and that's actually a pretty good description the point is that each standard really just gives you a framework for a management system which is designed to cover the whole range of business activities which you know as, as we've discussed are the distilled wisdom of people with expertise in their subject matter and they know the needs of the organizations that they represent so this is people such as manufacturers, sellers, buyers, customers, trade associations, users, even regulators. 
So to take ISO 9001, uh, the management system itself can be described in the following way. Quality management standards set out a framework for a management system to help organizations work more efficiently and reduce product or service failures. Uh, examples from the other standards that I cover would be um, environmental management standards, help organizations reduce environmental impacts, reduce waste and be more sustainable. Um, health and safety standards help organizations reduce accidents in the workplace. Information security standards help organizations keep sensitive information secure. You get the general idea and it, it really is that, that simple if you like. The standards provide the framework for you to operate in. So, for example, within 9001, you get the requirement to record and analyze errors, to gather customer feedback, to have management review meetings and what the agenda should consist of. Uh, but the actual management system that you operate will be down to how you run your company. Um, so, for example, there's no one way that you must gather customer feedback just as long as you're doing it, then you're complying with the standard. And basically, why shouldn't you comply with the standard? Um, I mean, after all, the whole point of it is to make your business better. Um, so if you don't have a way of gathering customer feedback, then yes, you're not complying with the standard, uh, but that isn't really the point. The point is you're not improving your business. Um, if you don't try to find out what your clients actually think about your product or your service, then obviously you'll never be able to give them the best customer experience. Um, how will you manage customer satisfaction and loyalty? How will you grow customer retention? How will you improve your products or your services without getting that all important feedback from customers? So the, it's, the thing to remember is the standard is a manageable framework that's been put together by experts um, and your management system needs to operate within this framework. And basically, if you run your management system properly, then it can basically guarantee you that your business will improve. So the next question is why get a quality management system? Well, quality management adopts the perspective that all parts of an organization and all its employees can have an impact on quality. So although errors of those in direct contact with customers, maybe if you like more instantly recognizable, errors made by those who have only an indirect role can also have a serious impact on quality. Um, for example, designers may not deal directly with customers, but the poor design of a product may certainly dissatisfy them, uh, or a clerical error may result in an angry customer if it leads to, for example, their being invoiced incorrectly, even though that customer may never ever speak to anyone from the accounts department. Um, so the idea is that quality management takes a truly systemic approach to organizations and it's based on the belief that quality will come about only if all employees and all activities of an organization are involved. Um, so as you can see on the screen there, there's four real key points to consider. Um, one, that an organization is viewed as a system of interconnected people. Number two, that any action taken anywhere can have an impact on quality. So that's any action right throughout the chain. Um, that supply, suppliers are an important part of this system. Uh, and in a spirit of partnership, they should always be included in your improvement activities. And quality should always be viewed from the customer's or end user's perspective. So to see quality through the eyes of customers and see their expectations, which is really what you're trying to do, uh, then an organization must first know what its customers want. Um, building a relationship with and getting closer to customers is obviously essential if you want to get a, a thorough understanding of their expectations. So quality management highlights the important role played by all those who obviously deal directly with customers. So those providing direct services, the sales staff, the marketing staff and so on. And obviously it's a fact that these staff have got a, a really invaluable opportunity to get information about the perceptions that customers have about your company and its products or services, uh, but can also gauge any changes in customers' expectations and gather any kind of in indications about their future requirements, so a bit of horizon scanning almost. But what about those who operate well away from customers? Um, well, quality management addresses this with the concept of a chain. 
In this chain, everyone in an organization, no matter where they work in it, is considered a link. And the chain eventually leads to an external customer. So put simply, if quality is maximized as a product or service moves along a chain, then ultimately the customer is going to be satisfied. And changes in customer requirements can also be communicated backwards along the chain. So these chains can then stretch all the way back to suppliers, which is why it's important to see them almost as part of your company. And for this concept to work in practice, obviously good communications throughout the whole chain is absolutely essential. Um, this leaves no place for turf wars that, as we know, can characterize so much of an organization's life. Um, quality management just simply can't work within an atmosphere of them and us. This means that quality should always be the top of the management agenda, and it can be a, an issue that requires leadership from the very top of an organization. Senior managers lack of commitment is actually recognized as the most significant barrier to achieving successful implementation of a quality management system. This is why senior managers need to develop a quality strategy for a company that will actually do four things. Make clear the broad aims and the long-term goals of your quality management system, your QMS. Define how quality management fits into your corporate objectives and strategy. Describe the actions needed to implement the QMS and then properly assess and provide the, the resources needed for the implementation. And there's in fact three factors which are all common to whichever approach you take to quality management systems. The first one is management commitment and a good quality policy. Uh, the second one is the use of tools that constantly and quantitatively monitor and compare performance results and teamwork. So the successful implementation of a quality management system really requires a supported culture. And this is what we call the culture of quality. Um, in this culture, there's a strong sense of learning from mistakes, uh, avoiding the allocation of blame. Uh, everyone basically takes responsibility for achieving quality improvements. Uh, and there's invariably always a, a positive management style. So then we look at your system and its processes. So this really is, is bringing us to the crux of what, what I wanted to communicate today. And this is that one of the most fundamental issues which ISO 9001 addresses, which forms the whole basis of your customer's satisfaction is something called the process approach. Now this requires your company to establish, implement, maintain, and continually improve your QMS by taking your customer's needs and requirements into account when building the very processes your company will be operating on. So ISO 9001 says you must determine the processes needed for your QMS and the way that they're applied throughout your business. And that you must firstly determine the inputs required. So exa for example, what facilities do you need? What equipment do you need? What personnel, what controls? and the outputs expected from these processes. So is it a, what is it? Is it a finished uh, product or a finished service, for example? And then you need to determine the sequence and the interaction of processes. So which bits of the process must become, come before or after others. Uh, then you need to determine and apply the criteria and the methods of control. What this means is how are these processes monitored? How are they measured? Are you using key performance indicators, for example? Then you need to assign the responsibilities and the authorities for the processes, which is basically who does what and ultimately who is in charge. Then you need to address the risks and opportunities of these processes. So what could go wrong in these processes and what are the opportunities that you currently have in order to make sure either that doesn't happen or that you've got contingencies in place to limit the impact of this on your business. Then you need to evaluate these processes and implement any changes needed to ensure that these processes achieve their intended results. And then finally, you need to look at how you improve the processes and thus your overall quality management system. So can you do things quicker, cheaper, more productively, more effectively? Always bear in mind, though, that you're trying to make things better for your customer. And that's always your ultimate aim. So. ISO 9001 
include specific requirements necessary for the adoption of the processes, processes approach when you're developing, implementing, and imp improving your management system. And obviously this requires that you systematically define and manage your processes. But you should always develop a process model that explains the key processes of your company and how each relates and links to the others. Now, the depth of your process explanation can be as detailed as you want, but it should always be based on your customer's requirements, as well as obviously the nature of what you actually do. Then we look at building your process approach. So when building your process approach, there are three key things that you need to do. Firstly, define your quality management system processes. So as we just discussed, ISO 9001 does not provide you with a list of core quality management system processes that you have to include. You need to determine these yourself. Um, so what sort of things should you include? Well, some examples of processes might be around manufacturing processes, design processes, distribution processes, development processes, um, service, delivery, assembly, uh, then other support processes like your quality assurance, you know, how you quality check, uh, new customer onboarding, um, how you manage equipment, how you approve suppliers and evaluate them, uh, how you identify risk and how you manage that risk, uh, contract change or contract variance, how you handle complaints, how you handle information, how you handle audit and inspections. Um, so it's really up to you how you do it, but you just need to ask yourself, how you're constantly providing your products and services which meet customer and of course applicable statutory and regulatory uh, requirements. But in addition, you always need to ask yourself how you're enhancing customer satisfaction. And then the second way of building your, your process approach is to assign responsibilities and authorities for processes. So you need to work out who is responsible for what process. Uh, and when you're doing this, you need to pay particular attention to involving employees in building this process-based quality management system, training individuals so they understand their roles and accountabilities in relation to the processes so that they can see processes from end to end and they see where they fit into the processes. Um, structure an audit program around these processes, don't structure them around job or role functions. Uh, ensure that you can get the documented information needed to support the operation of processes, which basically means you can have confidence that the processes are being carried out in the way that you envisaged. In other words, making sure that you can get the evidence to prove that your monitoring or your KPIs are actually being met. And then make sure you have the right procedures and work instructions uh, in place in order to support these processes. Then finally, number three, identify risks and opportunities and plan to address these. So risk-based thinking, which is what ISO 9001 is built on, requires organizations to determine risks and opportunities to processes, as well as to products and services and the quality management system itself. And then the idea is that you take proportionate steps to address uh, any of these risks. So this is why you, you need to monitor and measure the performance of your processes. Um, therefore, how will you know whether there's uh, an increase in risk in the way that they're run? Now, this brings us to the kind of the takeaway. Uh, and, and this is the bit that you can do yourself. Um, this is something called the turtle diagram, um, which is something that we use in ISO. Um, it's, uh, this is usually how we plan our processes. It's a visual tool that can be used to detail in quite a, a precise manner all of the elements of any given process within an organization. So in the center there, we've got the actual scope of the process. So what, is it, what does it do? What is it trying to achieve? And then we have a, a with whom section where we find all of the job roles within the organization that have the responsibility to complete the process. Now, this helps to demonstrate how the organization assigns roles and responsibilities because you may have um, different individuals who are actually parts of many different processes. In the with what section, you find all of the resources needed to successfully perform the process. 
again, this section helps to demonstrate how you plan your operations and that you're always on top of any essential resources needed to do the job. In the house section, um, you find reference to specific documents within your current system that tells people responsible for completing the process how to complete them in line with your best practice. So these might be things such as standard operating procedures or work instructions, which allow the, the process to actually function as planned. And then finally, in the what results section, uh, we find all of the measures the organization has at its disposal to monitor how well the process is performing. So remember that if these measures are accurately aligned to the organization's business plan, its policies, its goals, its objectives, then at a glance, these measures will be able to tell management, indeed anyone else who wants to check, such as an auditor, uh, if the process is indeed fulfilling its remit and supporting the organization, or if corrective or improvement actions are needed and that they're being undertaken. So basically, at the end of this, you're trying to determine Firstly, how well the process approach is understood and deployed within your organization. Uh, how well are your management system processes and their sequences and interactions being defined? What information exists to ensure the effective operation and control of the processes? So this could be your defined process requirements, your defined roles, uh, any required competencies, associated training, uh, any guidance material needed? Um, what are the necessary criteria and methods to ensure the effective operation and control of the processes? So basically, how are they being monitored? Are you using process monitoring indicators, performance indicators? Are you setting targets? Are you collecting data? Are you analyzing trends? Um, are you using audits? Then you then look at what are the arrangements for governing the processes. Um, so this, are you looking at process reviews? Have you got a dashboard that you refer to? Um, do you use resource needs reviews? Um, how about competency and training reviews? Uh, how is this contributing to continual improvements? And what type of action is being taken when the process's performance isn't up to scratch? And finally, um, how well the capture of customer needs and requirements is very important uh, and the methods that you're using in order to build these into the management system. So are you talking about quality assurance checks? Are you talking about service level agreements? Are you talking about general customer feedback? So you need to check that process inputs and outputs are working properly and you need to look for evidence that your organization has one, assign duties, stroke process owners. Two, assess risks and opportunities. Three, provided the right level of resources. Four, implemented the measurement criteria. How are you measuring the process? And five, improve the management system and improve its processes. So this has all really been about customer focus which involves determining customer requirements and ensuring that your processes exist to meet their requirements and to achieve customer satisfaction. So you enhance customer satisfaction by ensuring that customer requirements are identified. So the principal message that senior management needs to convey is that the objective of the business is to satisfy your customers by ensuring that your processes exist to achieve the following. One, identifying customer requirements. Two, meeting customer requirements. And three, enhancing customer satisfaction. So in summary, when looking at customer focus, you need to assess whether customer satisfaction is being adequately determined and whether corrective action is being undertaken when things go wrong. You must also ensure that customer requirements are identified and consistently met, and then the, the focus of enhancing customer satisfaction is constantly maintained. And you need to also determine and address the risks and opportunities that can affect your products or services and might hurt your ability to enhance customer satisfaction. So trends and key indicators of satisfaction also need to be captured and benchmarked. So customer satisfaction um, information that needs to be obtained from customer feedback and analyzing customer res responses. And this can be done 
in such things as, as you can see there, um, what level of repeat business you're getting, uh, an analysis of customer complaints and customer satisfaction in your quality assurance process, uh, any recognition and awards you're getting, um, uh, you're being awarded particularly for any customer service um, uh, level that you're, you're, you're managing to attain, uh, your growth of business with your key clients, um, even your on-time delivery. So the key takeaway that I'd like to finish on is that it is vital for the development and the success of any business to ensure that clients are satisfied with the service that you provide. And frankly, this all starts and ends with how you have constructed your own business processes to meet their needs. Uh, and basically, ISO 9001 quality management system is a very good way to do this. Uh, so thank you very much and I think I'm open to questions. Brilliant. Thank you so much, Russell. That was really, uh, really informative. And, and uh, yeah, that turtle diagram is, is something that uh, I think I'll definitely be stealing mm -hmm. for some of the stuff that, that we do uh, here. So um, if anyone has any questions, please put them in the chat. Um, I have a few uh, things I'd like uh, to ask Russell to kick off. But but yeah, if, uh, please uh, add, add questions to the, the chat box and I'll, I'll relay those to Russell. Um, so one thing that, that struck me is you said about, you know, the, these processes need to be um, defined around, um, around the requirements rather than around job titles. Mm. Um, and I think that's quite an interesting uh, point insofar as I think people can be a little bit reticent to give up and people can be a bit siloed in their thinking around what stuff they're responsible for and what the stuff they should do. Um, do you have any sort of in, insight or thoughts or, or maybe even tips of, of how to get over that and, and, and get almost everyone, you know, you almost have to get people thinking as a team rather than this is my job, I do this, I'm not going to give up that, you know, because what you want of, evidently is people who are very focused on the end process and, and, and happy to, be, to contribute to it however they best can. Yeah, I mean, I mean that's the thing, if, if you're looking at the process approach, I mean, that, that in itself really does get to um, almost break down those silos because when you're looking at the end-to-end -end process of um, you know, how an organization operates, how it actually delivers, um, then people actually see where they fit into the, the, the process. And they, all, they also see that what they do has an impact on other processes within the, within the organization. And it just makes them um, maybe, like you say, brings down those barriers. Oh, oh well, actually, I, I, I see now that I should actually be working with that department rather than just you know, ribbing them for being rubbish all the time. And, and actually what we do has a big impact on how they're performing as well. So um, it, it is, it's, it's getting um, everyone within the organization to see, see the flow of, of how a product or a service runs through an organization, sees how, where, where their particular link is, but where their link is in relation to all of the other links, and then how that, how important those, all of those links are, including their own, is to the final delivery. And mm -hmm. then again, getting that, that communication, that feedback from that end link back along that chain as well. So people are actually understanding you know, what's been done well, what's been done badly, you know, how things can be done better, how people's, because nobody likes working for a company that gets it wrong all the time. I mean, there can't be anything more soul destroying. So yeah. if you're working for a company that, that is customer focused and is getting it right and getting good, good feedback from customers and you're winning awards and, you know, it becomes a, a great company to work for. Yeah, and I suppose it, it's a way, it's just communicating that bigger picture, right? And I think that that's sometimes the, the thing. I, you know, I, I know myself as a manager, sometimes I've not been very good at communicating the bigger picture to, to employees or to people involved. You know, I think uh, once you do that, people uh, buy in a lot more. Um, good question here from Laura that actually touches on something that I was going to ask, actually. So Laura, as I think she mentioned, is from a reasonably sized uh, conveyance and services legal company, basically. And she's asking how applicable is this to industries say, obviously you can see how this can have a, obviously be very applicable to manufacturing, but would a, would a business services uh, company benefit from this? And, you know, I was, I was going to ask, are there any companies that wouldn't benefit from, from this kind of approach? Yeah, I mean, that, that is a great question. It, it's one to get asked a lot. And the, and the reason is, um, if you go back to the old standard, I mean, it, 
9001 quality management system did start off in manufacturing. It actually goes back to the MOD um, um, back, in, back in the day after the war. There were various different standards that were flying around and, and the, the, um, the British military and the, and the US military decided to get together and have one common standard because it was just getting too confusing with so many standards flying around. So it really goes back to arms manufacturing. And then it's kind of developed along manufacturing lines. And if, even if you go back to, um, you, you'll see the, the standard itself will have the, the title ISO 9001. Then there'll be a colon, then there'll be a year. And the one we've got at the moment is 2015. Um, if you go back to even to the 2008, which was the one before that, still very manufacturing um, kind of focused, um, you know, very much you will do this and you, you will do it in this way and you will do it in that way. Um, thankfully, they, in, in 2015, um, that was a very big kind of sea change in the way that, that the, the management systems were written. Um, now they're much more uniform and they're very much based um, uh, around, you know, how every business operates. Um, so very, very much is not definitely not manufacturing um, any longer. Um, and as I say, it, it, it is it is a, is a couple of things. It, it takes a process-based approach, which is what we've talked about today. And of course, every business has some kind of processes involved, no matter, some are very simple, some are very complex, uh, but they all involve people. Um, and as we know, people are always the biggest biggest issue when it comes to managing a company. So that that's it's really about putting a management system in place so, so that everybody knows where they are, if you like. Um, but um, yeah, it, it, it is it is one of these. It's it's processed approach and it's risk based approach as well. So it's basically looking at the risks to the business, which could come from anywhere. Um, you know, they could be commercial risks, they could be operational risks, they could be um, regulatory, political. Um, so it's just getting you to think about what those risks are, what those risks might be, how you would mitigate them, um, and of course. Um, you know, b before um, the beginning of last year, um, you know, going around putting in a lot of management systems, auditing a lot of management systems, um, there'd always be a line in there about a pandemic. And of course, nobody ever thought that would happen. <laughs> and all of a sudden, um, you know, it's, it's in every single um, risk-based analysis of a business now. Um, but, you know, there were some, some canny businesses who were looking, genuinely looking at that as a something which could affect them and what would be the contingency in place if it did. Um, so it's it's that kind of approach. Okay, brilliant. Well, um, I think uh, if anyone else has any uh, questions, then, um, well, Laura says thank you, by the way. Um, yeah, any questions, uh, now, now's your last chance. What I would, my final question really is, for a company that's, that is, is committed to, or at least wants to investigate this as, a, as an option, what would be the first step if you were going into a company, you know, what would be the very first thing you would advise them to do in order to either Im implement or just investigate whether this is right for them? And I, I'd assume that you'd advocate that it's right for every company, but at the same time, you know, what would be that first step? What's the quickest and easiest thing that they can do in the next 15 minutes yeah. to, to bring people together or to, um, to have that kind of uh, discussion? I think really that the first thing I, I do is ask the company why why do you want this? Why do you want this management system? It, it tends to be split into two camps. You tend to get businesses that want the management system because really they have they, they feel they have to have it. It's either because they have to have it in order to tender for something or to get on a supply chain or because all their competitors have got it. So if we don't have it, then you know we could potentially lose out. But then you, you get also get businesses that, that genuinely just want to improve. They just want to improve their processes. They want... Um, you know, they want to put in, have a sort of a wholesale look at the business, put a management system in. Uh, and why wouldn't you put, you know, one that's already been designed for you and is, is off the shelf. Um, and as I say, has, has, has gone through all this scrutiny and is used by many other businesses as well. So it would be to look at what, you know, what are the reasons you, you want, you want to do it. Um, you know, I, I don't know down my nose at people who, who, who say, you know, we, we have to have it because, um, what I find is people who, who initially start down the journey and say, oh, we have to have it. And then you start putting it in and then they can see the logic of it and the sense of it. And actually they end up being, you know, the, the biggest um, proponents of it. think it's absolutely wonderful. And why didn't we do this before? So, you know, I suppose it's, it's, it's where you want to come from um, in terms of, you know, it, it is a commitment. Um, it is a commitment in time. It is obviously a financial commitment as well. Uh, but there is some, 
uh, management time's got to go into it, some stack times that's, that's got to go into it. So, um, you know, if, if you kind of decide for, for what reasons you want to put a management system in, I, I'd say that was your first step. And then, then recognize, as I say, that there's going to be some kind of commitment that you're going to have to be, that's going to have to put in as your second step. And then sort of as, as your third step, um, you know, just, um, you know, speak to me for 15 minutes and I'll tell you what's involved. And, and then you can decide whether you want to, want to go from there. Brilliant. And that, that leads on then uh, nicely to Schneska's, uh, Schneska's, uh, sorry, um, question. How long would you expect the implementation of a robust quality management system to take? Again, it, it, this is one of these kind of it depends questions. Um, I think as we, we've gone on in the, in, in the presentation that, that um, the management system is a framework that really it's up to you to populate that framework. So some companies may already be populating that framework without knowing they're doing, you know, not consciously undoing this for 9001, but they already have that information in place. For example, they may already have a way of collecting customer feedback. They may already have a way of looking at what's called non-conformances or non-conformities or, or whatever you want to describe it as. Um, they may already sort of have a training matrix that they keep for all their staff. So it really depends what's already in place. Uh, and if they've got a lot of things in place, um, then obviously it's going to be a lot quicker from a company that really has nothing at all in place, just doesn't keep records of, you know, basically anything. Because at the end of the day, to get the standard, you have to be audited. You, you'll have an external certification body that will come in and do an audit on your company. And then obviously, if they've got things they can audit, that's fine. But if you don't have anything for them to audit, then obviously... Um, you know, you need to you need to be generating something for them to audit. So, um, really, it, as I say, it, it's an it, de it depends situation. Um, I've done um, a, a sort of full implement full implement implementation in a month. I've also had a company that's been so slow; it's taken nearly a year and a half. Um, but I usually say that about sort of two to three months is quite average. Okay. What what kind of uh, what kind of cost is that? Is that I'm assuming there's a, a, obviously the cost of the assessments and uh, Laura, Laura's interested in what the cost would be for that. Yeah. So so the costs whether you're talking about a consultant or a um, a certification body. So just to split the two up, you you would usually get a consultant in um, who would actually put the system in place or, or give you the tools to for you to populate the the system mm -hmm. if you like. Um, and then the you would get a certification body in who they will actually they're the ones who actually issue the certificate, so they come in and audit you, and then if you if if they audit you they will audit you against the standard, and if you're doing what the standard says, then they pass you when you get your certificate and you hang it on the wall and big fanfare. Um, but uh, that again, whether it's a consultant or a, or a certification body. Um, it, it's one of these, it depends questions again. It depends how big the organization is and it depends how risky the organization is as well. So if it's, if you're, you know, the, the bigger and the more risky the organization, then the more days that, you know, people like me and certification bodies will then charge to do their mm -hmm. jobs. Okay, all right, great. Well, um, what I'm going to do now is just let everybody know that I have put a few links in the chat uh, to receive, uh, if they want to get weekly updates from us about upcoming events, uh, and um, they can either check it out online or subscribe to the, the weekly newsletter, which is just a quick update. Um, so we, we're going to finish off there. What I will do is very finally, I will quickly uh, share the uh, um, contact details. Uh, if you wanted to get in touch with me or indeed Russell. Um, so yeah, drop Russell a line if you wanted to have a quick follow-up with him uh, and a, uh, perhaps a consultation about um, what the next steps are. Uh, yeah, you get free 15 minutes with Russell. And those of you on the AGP uh, program might be eligible for a work package uh, whereby uh, the Accelerated Growth Program will pay for Russell to, to work with you. Um, otherwise, you know, they're, they're obviously options uh, other options as well so um thank you everyone for attending really appreciate your questions and your attentiveness i uh, hope it was um useful i certainly found out uh, well spotted lots of uh, gaps in in things that we're doing um at my business as well so uh yeah hopefully i'll see some of you at some of the upcoming events and uh thanks for attending um 
Russell, if you stick around for a few moments at the end, um, mm -hmm. and uh, everyone else, class dismissed. So thanks, folks. Cheers. <laughs>